now tuned in to, to Clearly, Clearly Culture. We're back with another episode of Clearly Culture, the podcast, you guys. Very special guest, very special friend as well. Mona Leo is joining the show today. Hey, y'all. What's up, big Leo? How Pleasure are you? Pleasure to be here. I'm glad. I'm just excited for this. I'm excited that y'all are branching out, doing yes. something different. Yes. I'm glad we get some visuals with the voices. Because I feel like we always hear you guys' voices on the radio. But now people can really put a face to the sound, to the voice. So it's cool. I'm glad to be here. Yay. I got a question. Mm-hmm. How is your mental health? It's good. Honestly, it's really good. Um, I was concerned at first for like the postpartum experience, but I have a really good support system. Like my mom, to my mom, Stunna's mom, Stunna, my my whole family really, they really like circled around us and make sure that we felt supported um, as new parents. So it's good. It takes a village for sure it does. to raise a baby. And you just had congratulations on the baby too. Thank you. Because this is our first time doing an interview or anything since then. Yep. But we've been knowing each other for what? It's like been like three years maybe? Like, right yep. before the pandemic? Yeah, right before the pandemic, I feel like, yeah. So, for people who don't know, let's take it back a little bit. Like, yeah. how did you first get started in music and everything? So, I have a younger brother. I always talk about him. His name is um, Young Rampage. He's still in high school. He's getting ready to graduate. So, I feel like people will be able to see more of him now because he's not obligated. Well, he, ah. he, let me say this. <laughs> he doesn't have to be at school every single day. Obviously, like, when you are a kid, it's, like, difficult for you to, like, be trying to do like have a rap career yeah. and also go to school but I feel like people will be able to see more of him in like this upcoming year so I'm excited for that to do more stuff with him but I have a younger brother his name is Young Rampage um I took him to the studio for um like his I want to say it was his 14th I can't remember I took him to the studio though for his birthday mm-hmm. um for the first time he was always a really good talented freestyle artist mm-hmm. um and I would always record videos of him rapping over beats stuff like that posted on my twitter it would go viral um, so I took him to the studio for his birthday, and he said that he wanted me to get on the song with him, me and my older brother. My older brother, he wanted us to do a song with him for his birthday. Mm-hmm. So I did my verse, wrote it real quick, and I just did it as a joke, and I posted it to Instagram, and it got a decent response from like my peers. Um, and from there, I was like, okay, this is gonna be something that I pursue. And then the next song that I ended up recording was "Beat Down Your Block," and I posted the snippet on Twitter, and it went. Um, viral and labels started calling me I quit my job that I had at the time what was, was your job I was working as a crisis intervention so like wow. um, for the city of Houston if like when you called now I was answering like 911 phone calls wow. literally so um, I was doing that and I quit my job um, I flew to LA I met with the label out there I ended up turning down a label all of the label deals because I wanted to stay independent but from there um, I guess it was just up for and real. Now we're here. Let me ask you, how did you come up with the name Mona Leo? So, um, I kind of wanted, to, well, obviously I wanted it to be a, a play on Mona Lisa. Um, for like I'm a work of art. Um, mm-hmm. You know, ah. that's just, that's how I felt about that's myself. And true. that's how I still feel. Um, so I kind of chopped off the Lisa. I put Leo, Mona Leo. And that kind of was my name before um, I was ever thinking about being an artist. So I had a lot of different ventures before then. Like I did makeup and it was Mona Leo makeup. And then I did clothing. It was Mona Leo clothing, Mona Leo merchandise. Small shit. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> Obviously, right, right. like, it wasn't just, like, taking off, but it was just, like, something that I was, like, branding for myself. And it just kind of carried over into the music. So when, did, when do you think you started that branding? Like, was that before beating down your blog? Definitely way before, long before. So I probably was in... I changed my Instagram name, like, when I, went in, when I got into high school. I think, like, my ninth grade year, I wanted to be, like... Mona Leo like wow. that's the persona that's that's who I wanted to do. I wanted to step into that and what that meant for me was just like a more confident um strong just beautiful elegant version of myself because I feel like I went through a lot of things growing up and I just kind of wanted to transition when I got to high school um, now, so I guess that's where I now you got a lot of social media followers and they so loyal the only so other loyal. artist I know who has loyal <laughs> um followers like you is zero mm-hmm. I mean your followers are do anything you ask to ask them to do yeah <laughs> why are they so loyal to you you think i think we have this camaraderie um amongst each other and just there's a solidarity um because i'm a human being and they really um they recognize that in me outside of the artist they recognize me as being a human with real emotions i speak on real shit that a lot of people are afraid to talk about or um, just are not ready to talk about, I would say. So I think we built like a really close, tight knit relationship because of 
me just being able to talk about personal experiences and them being able to relate. Right, because I see you in your car talking. I see you at the <laughs> mall talking. I'll see you at your house talking. When we had, when you had that party, what, what party was it? It wasn't Halloween. It was like a pink party. like Oh, the girls outside party. The girls outside mm-hmm. party. I mean, they were like on the game. We were like, this looks like Michael Jackson is inside. Like we were tripping out it the It was fans crazy, were, yeah. That yes. was the first time that I had. And I also, I let the record go to show. I grew up very, very introverted. I grew up very... I was just weird, strange, whatever you want to call it, kind of like the fly on the wall. I never really spoke very much like when I was in room. So to go from that to now being able to throw a party and people are lined up, wrapped around the gate, police coming to shut it down, like that was a really mind-boggling experience. Mm -hmm. But I talk about that. And, again, going back to what you said, I think that's why we have such a close relationship because they've also been able to see the journey of me going from this person to now, you know, just getting bigger and bigger. When I came to your party, I realized you were a superstar. Now, you're one of my favorite artists. I can't lie. <laughs> you be saying this. Is this, <laughs> is this true? Are you, you talking about Should we test him? Real. Should we test him? Yeah. I mean, you pull out the phone. I know you're ready there? for this. I wouldn't ask if I didn't think you were ready. I, I mean, yeah. I got a bad uh, memory. Here memory. You go. Here you I do. Go. I do. <laughs> but I, I mean, I do know the songs. You know, you started off with Sober Mind. Why did you start off mm. with that? I, I wanted to, so first of all, obviously, when I was pregnant, I could not drink, obviously, drink liquor. Um, so, I didn't mean, when I wrote Sober Minds, I wasn't literally talking about, like, sobriety. I was really just talking about, like, clarity mentally, like, just, um, I went through so many different emotions and hormones, obviously, when I was pregnant, and I had to face myself a lot of the times. Um, face the things that I didn't want to face and obviously I couldn't mask that with alcohol or any I couldn't mask that I had to really deal with all of those emotions and it was probably the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life between pregnancy and labor and birth Uh that was like the most difficult experience for sure Mm -hmm. so a sober mind was kind of like an ode to this new person that I was becoming like um, you know just mentally things were clearing up for me they were making sense my purpose became a little bit more clear um throughout my pregnancy I was just able to see things for what they were and I think that's why I wrote Sober Minds but also it can it's a double you know it could also double as literal sobriety because I was literally sober obviously speaking of your misunderstood um misunderstood I I, love that one that's another favorite I wrote that for all of like the all of the black women in my life and I I I want to stop saying strong black women. Like, I want to step away from that. Just black women in general. I wrote that for um, all of the women in my life, um, all of the matriarchs of the family. It's like my mom, my grandmother, um, Sonna's mom. Uh-huh. I wrote that for them and myself, obviously, um, my grandmothers, because I wanted to just talk about the experience of, like, bl- being a black woman and having to um, kind of live this double life, like, have to present a strong you know, present yourself as if you're strong on the outside and then struggle with a lot of different things internally. So I wanted to write that song for um, all the women in my family. And they love it. We love it. We play it all the time. It's like, <laughs> it's our thing. We do love it. Also, speaking of your birth, how did you decide that you wanted to do it at home? Um, I've decided very early on in my pregnancy. Mm-hmm. Like, as soon as I found out, I knew that I wanted to have a home birth. I knew that I wanted it to be intimate. Because um, my mom and my grandma, they both had very traumatic birth experiences. My mom had C-sections with all of her children. Mm-hmm. My grandmother only had one child because she almost died giving birth to my mom. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to, to kind of take back my power, take back my control in that situation, and I wanted to do it from home. You weren't nervous about it? I was. Yeah? I was. I didn't know how I was going to do it because I don't have a very, or at least I thought that I didn't have a very good pain threshold. Like, I don't. I don't. I didn't have any tattoos. I, you know anything. So I didn't think that I was ready to Ooh. experience that type of pain. I had never broken any bones. Nothing. <coughs> and you didn't take nothing. I didn't take anything. Oh my god. Wow. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I didn't take anything. And he knows obviously because he was there. Yeah. He was there. We were both like, that was difficult for us because I at a point in time I was ready to go to the hospital because that pain got so intense and I was in labor for 48 hours literally. So towards the end, like about like the like the 46 hour mark uh-huh. and I was like I can't do this do they tell you before like how long about it's gonna be or no not? you never know it just depends some women be in labor for 36 hours mm-hmm. some women are in labor for four hours yeah. like it really you don't know Jazz you wanna get pregnant no, or something no you're pregnant <laughs> or something you're gonna get upset <laughs> like, right like, now what's up? <laughs> do you think you have more I definitely think so yeah okay, cool. 
I love that experience. It was beautiful. And watching you transition from from artist now to mother. I, first off, congratulations. Thank I know you. we've said that, but I wanted to tell you that. Um, how how is making this transition? And and for the people that are going to be watching this, what are maybe some things that you could tell them to either prepare for or get ready for mothers to be or <laughs> thinking about being a mother to be? <laughs> Just make sure you have a really good support system. I would not have been able to do it without having a really genuine support system and people who um, want to see me do well they want to see me succeed they were pushing me throughout the entire process um, through labor everybody was there they were rooting me on like I was I was ready to give up I'm not even for, for to pretend like I was just being super strong the entire time majority of the time I held it together mm -hmm. but towards the end I was I was ready to give up because it was it was intense I was crying I was screaming like that pain was I had never experienced anything like that before so I would definitely say just prepare yourself for it to be difficult but understand that it's still a beautiful experience and nothing good comes easy I'll say that so oh. Okay, how did you know that Stunner was the one? Because you're very young, <laughs> but you seem so confident in this man. Definitely. I see you <laughs> everywhere with him. It's like you believe in him, and he believes in you also. Right, exactly. So how did you know he was the one? I think it's kind of like the energy that he came with. Because honestly, me personally, like you said, I'm so young. So even when we first met, I didn't, I wasn't thinking that it was like a very serious thing. Like, it was very much so like... Whatever. How did y'all me. meet, by the way? We met at the studio. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I was. He was out there in the. Um, we met at Sugar Hill, actually. He was in the lobby. I like was coming in, saw him, introduced myself to him. We shook hands, and I, I, I actually thought he was rude at the time. I was like, oh, I don't. Like I really don't like him. Um, but like how he said, like how you said, he's really confident in me. He believes in me. And he speaks life into me um, in a way that I've never experienced before so that's something that's very difficult to come by and a lot of people don't understand we really we be bumping heads a lot of the time he's a capricorn I'm a tourist right we bump heads a lot um we also have we were from two different places he's not from where i'm from and vice versa um so we you know there's always just like some hurdle that we have to get over and people don't understand that but i think when you find someone that believes in you and that loves you and supports you um unapologetically and uh -huh. through Without judgment, I think that's something that you really need to hold on to. Was this so. was this done as first child as well too? Definitely. So so both. <laughs> let me, let me okay. I'm I don't do niggas with kids. I I made that very clear. I don't like. I don't. That's not my vibe. So it was definitely gonna be his first child. For sure. And then you said you said he was rude when when you first met him. But he wasn't even rude. He was just that's kind of how he is. But right. at the time, I'm very like open warm inviting mm -hmm. right he's not like that all the time so when i first met him he was just very standoffish mm -hmm. understandably right. obviously because i mean he had just moved down here he didn't know anyone it was just he was kind of in his own little world and i thought he was being rude but he wasn't and how did that barrier get broken how did y'all end up actually yeah yeah reconnecting he dm me on instagram oh, <laughs> he slid in my dm yeah. uh -huh. Uh -huh. and he said he said why haven't i ran into you yet I said, nigga, I just met you two weeks ago. <laughs> good line, though. Good line. That was cool. I said, what? And he was like, oh, okay, well, my name is, I'm. Look, let me reintroduce myself. Just trying to be a Mac. Trying mm -hmm. to be a little Mac. You know about that. What was right. his first date? <laughs> yeah. What was the first date? Oh, you know what? The first day I invited him. So I had like four shows on one day. I invited him to all of the shows. I think he also had um, something to do that day. So he ended up not coming to any of the shows. Ooh. What? <laughs> but like, after what? I finished the shows and he was like, um, you like just pull up over here like whenever you finish your shows. Mm -hmm. So I pulled up and it was kind of like club shows. I'm be honest. I'm going to be very honest. Hey, it was it. club shows. So we was kind of like club hopping and we were taking shots at all the clubs. Mm -hmm. So I was a little inebriated yeah it was a little tipsy yeah. um and i went over there and he was very respectful like very respectful he kind of like sat my shoes i had on these um, nice little glasses he like set my glasses up oh. uh, put my purse in. He, you know he was just making yeah. sure that all my stuff was like very taken care of and mm -hmm. i can appreciate um and obviously you don't applaud a fish for swimming this is what he was supposed to do by the way right but i could appreciate it at the time that he didn't try to like take advantage of me because mm -hmm. especially like you know, you was lit. I was lit. Yeah, and he could have easily, God forbid, but yeah. he was very respectful, and I respected that about him. That because a lot of people I've met just in this industry, they're very, 
Yeah. Weird. Very right. weird. And right. they try to take advantage of you, especially like male rappers. I'm just going to be honest. Yeah. They try to take advantage of you in different scenarios, but he was very respectful. So I think that's kind of how we connected and I respected him. He respected me. And then from there, it was just. How y'all feel about getting married? Blossom. Cause honestly, I don't really know. Yeah. Like, I just want to yeah. know what y'all had thoughts on it. Um. Well, <laughs> let me say this. Need some water. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Let me say this. Let me say this. Um. So, um. In so after I have so I had my son in May. Um. In July, he he asked my dad if he could propose. Leonard. Y'all are already married, and I didn't invite to the wedding. I'm about to walk out. <laughs> Leonard, yeah, yeah. He asked Leonard, okay. <laughs> he did. So um, he asked him. My dad gave him um, his blessing, and he proposed. It was a very beautiful thing. I loved it. Um, yeah. So, so fiancé now, too. Fiancé now, yeah. Oof, oh, y'all happen. hearing it first. Let's let's Congratulations. And you know what's crazy? As we were pulling up here, mm -hmm. um... I uh -oh. literally was saying I left because I was doing my hair and I was like finger detangling my hair. Mm -hmm. I took all of my rings off, so I had like a full except for this one. This God, one. we're so stupid, y'all. <laughs> no, we're no, so stupid. This, no, no. This is oh. the promise ring. This is the first ring that he gave me, so it was a promise ring. Okay. So I'm not even wearing the. Engagement she got a ring. big rock. God, <laughs> a big rock. You saw it, right? This yeah, is, you saw it. Yeah, it's a big rock. You didn't even realize. I didn't even think God. about. You didn't pay attention. <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention. It's okay, it's better this way. I, I was just enjoying the basketball games. Right. But yeah, so he proposed, and I obviously said yes. Awesome. And yeah. Can Stunner cook? No. Okay. okay. Can you cook? Ooh. Yeah. Okay, okay. How can you cook? You're only 20 something. I'm from Houston. Okay, okay. I like cuisine. I like good food. I like down south, southern fried, country fried, all of that. What's so your I best like dish? Um, smothered chicken, I would say. Ooh. Smothered chicken over rice. Sometimes I put it over mashed potatoes if I feel it real starchy. Mac and cheese, cabbage, yeah. Okay, but for your son now, because he's very young, what is it just like similar or like, you know, like... So I was breastfeeding. It? I was exclusively exclusively breastfeeding um, for the first couple of months, and then it just got difficult because obviously I had to go back to the studio and, you know. So now we're doing... I'm doing both. So I'm like okay. co-feeding. So I'm like breastfeeding, and I'm also giving him um, like a natural organic formula. Oh, nice. Cool. Okay, you, also... Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. no, you go ahead, excited. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> when the Flowers Don't Die, because we didn't talk about the title of the yeah. project. How did you... Why did you choose that title? Um, I think I consider myself like the rose that grew from the concrete. So um, I feel like it was very unfazed by my circumstances, and it, I kind of was able to grow and blossom in very, you know, questionable situations. Um, and so that's kind of how I came up with Where the Flowers Don't Die. Well, let me say, so I did a song with No Cap um, called Miss You Already. And in that song, he said a line, like, talking about his friends and saying that they were on the other side where the flowers don't die. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was so beautiful. It really resonated with me for, obviously, personal reasons because I identify myself as the rose that grew from the concrete. So mm -hmm. that's kind of how I wanted to, um, that's how I decided that that line that he said would be good for an album title or project title rather Fine. what about goddess tell us about that yeah. song i love goddess so goddess is i actually when i first recorded goddess i didn't it wasn't going to go on the project at first because i didn't like it initially and it was literally just four lines it was literally just the hook and i was like eh, hey. i was iffy about it <laughs> um i just i don't know it just wasn't doing it for me at the time but mm -hmm. i think goddess is just talking about like um how beautiful women are and you know sometimes men just don't step up to the plate and mm -hmm. I was just I was really being satirical by saying like how can God be a man because <laughs> niggas <laughs> ain't shit his, yeah. literally mm -hmm. um, but it was satirical obviously I believe in God I believe that there is a higher power um definitely never want to disrespect the higher power that I believe in but like I said it was satirical fun light-hearted also, only my bad. Only okay. feature on the project, Flo Millie. Yeah. You guys have done like a couple songs together mm -hmm. now. Was like three or four, maybe. And she brought you out of Coachella, like all those. Yep. different... How did y'all like connect? Like y'all seem like y'all are real life friends. Yeah, we you are. Know what I mean? We are really friends. Um, I wanted her to be on We Not Humping. I wanted her to be on the original song, but um, it didn't work out that way. So I put the original out, and then I recruited her for the remix. Mm -hmm. And when we met each other in person, we instantly clicked. We instantly vibe. She was super genuine, super supportive of the entire process from start to finish. So that's my sister. Okay. I love her. Last one, Cologne mm -hmm. song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I want to know what are your favorite three colognes for a man for a man okay uh well cologne song i was in the studio literally and somebody walked in and they had this really potent 
cologne. And I love, like, I, when I came in, I actually wore kind of perfume. I love scents. The streets. She wears the streets. <laughs> the streets, yeah. I believe you. It smells good on me today. <laughs> but I love just scents. And um, I asked him what kind of cologne it was, and he didn't remember. And I was trying to, like, ask him, like, is it Versace? Is it this? Is it that? Because it smells familiar. But I just, like, what he, he literally, I literally was asking, what kind of cologne is that? He was like, oh, I don't remember. He didn't remember. Right. And I just wanted to write a song about it. I feel like it was a good, it was different. It was a different subject matter. Right. Um, from what's out right now. So I wanted to lean into that. Um, but my top three colognes for a man, for my man, let me uh-huh. say that. Um, Line number me. nine. Okay, I, I got that. You, you got that? I got that. Um, <laughs> there's this Chanel cologne that he wears sometimes. Okay. Um, and the third one is like, I think it's called Prada Ocean, if I'm not mistaken. It smells really good. Okay. What about you? Favorite me. perfume? I can't even decide, but I really, right now, I switch it up so much, but right now I'm wearing this brand called K. Ali. They have this green bottle perfume, and it's called like pistachio gelato or something like that. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm wearing right now. Okay. What about the Barbie movie? Did you go see it? I did. I actually did. Oh my God. It was so cute. I have to show y'all the videos. <laughs> I got, um, I took my whole, all the women in my family, like my mom, son is mom, um, my dad's wife, my younger sister, my friends, my homegirls. Mm-hmm. I took everybody to go and see the Barbie movie and I rented like a big old pink limo to pull up outside and I threw like a little Barbie theme party Aww. and it was a bunch of pink liquor there and it was pink foods and I took everybody to see the Barbie movie in the pink limo. Um, we we got shit faced. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't even get to see the movie because nah. we got there. We were just in the movie theater just laughing and giggling. It was such a beautiful, it was so fun. But yeah, I saw I saw it kind of, I guess you could say I, I didn't really see it. That's funny. <laughs> Great way to take your family and have fun with your family. Absolutely. Speaking about work, being with your family and stuff, like I know you have to work and you're a new mom and stuff. Like how are you going to balance like all of it? Because you're already back doing this. Like you, mm-hmm. your project and your son came in the same exact week. Was that a coincidence by the way? Um, Yes, it was because he was due. Um, he was due in June. He came in May, but I was working so hard in April. Mm-hmm. I ended up being one centimeter dilated a month before I gave birth. So I was on bed rest for an entire month oh. before I gave birth. But I knew that he was coming early because mm-hmm. you know. As, but as long as we monitored it very closely, he was safe. He was healthy enough, obviously, to still be for me to still have him at home everything was fully developed so mm-hmm. that's how he ended up coming early but no it was definitely a coincidence that he came the same week that the project came because that was not the plan <laughs> yes. and one thing one thing about you 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 and i love hearing the positivity and i feel like that's why a lot of people are naturally gravitate yeah. yeah they gravitate towards you and i also love that you bring a family a lot and that's one thing i want to ask so i love my family so you got a big family right yeah so mm-hmm. where are you from I'm from Houston, so I'm from Houston, Texas, for all you guys watching. But specifically for the people that are from Houston, I'm from Ridgemont. So I'm from Ridgemont Heights. Ridgemont, Ridgemont baby. Ridgemont <laughs> baby. That's where I'm from. That's yeah. where I'm, speaking of Ridgemont baby, I love that song too. You love that song? I, I told that. you. You see, I know all the songs because you really are my favorite artist. I talk about this all the time on the radio because you know what? I see a lot of artists, but on your album, it has so much flavor. You yeah. got so many great fans. Yeah. You have so many different styles. Thank That's you. why I say you're going to be around for the long run. Because Thank a lot you. of times you see artists and you know that this person is not fake. I mean, it's fake. Yeah. But you seem real to me, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, on every account or so. Yeah. I just want to say, man, I know that you're going to be around. Hell yeah. Thank you. A couple more questions. I really babe. appreciate Before that. Before we finish, yeah. Wig Splitter, how many months were you in that one at the house? I was... Um, the video, y'all. I was nine months. Yeah. So I was supposed to be on bed rest. Oh, oh, that was during that month? You were not dilated? I, it was definitely during that month. I was already dilated. Mm. I had already got my labor braids. So I got my braids May 1st. I shot the video like that same week. And I was nine months on May 1st. So, yeah. And, and what about ass kicking? The concept of the video was so live. I never so seen cool. nobody pregnant doing a video like that. Thank so you. Yeah. I did all of my own. That video literally sent me into early labor. I was one centimeter dilated the very next day, oh. the very next morning after I shot that video because I was doing all my own stunts. I was hitting people <laughs> with chairs. I was doing the, the first. fighting scenes. It was crazy. But I think I was, well, I was eight months mm-hmm. shooting that music video. Yeah, it's crazy. And like J-Mac said, he sees you in for the long haul. Yep. Yes. Where do you see Mona Leo in five years? I, in five years, so in five years, I will be 27. 
Young, young, oh young, young, young. My she God. said, I'm pissed. Nah. I'm sick. I will, I will be 27. <laughs> um, I just see myself flourishing. Um, I don't like to really put, like, um, ceilings on myself. So I'm not even, I don't gauge it with numbers or money. or. I just see myself being happy. And that's the always the ultimate goal for me. All of this other shit is fleeting. It comes and it goes. I just want to be happy with my family and my friends and the people that care about me and the people that support me. So. What if your kids said, you know what, I want to rap. Would y'all be okay with that? I would. Have whatever he wants to do, and whatever he wants to do. His nursery theme is um, space theme, and I picked that out because I want him to know that he could be anything in the world, anything in the universe is his. It's tangible. He can attain it. So anything he wants to be, I'm supporting. And speaking of anything, I know you look at your affirmations every day. What was the affirmation of for today? For today, ooh. I think it was, you are love. So I have this, so it's like a thing that like you tear it. After you look at it, you tear it off. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that it said you are love, if I'm not mistaken. But I guess I'm love. Can you sell those? I think your fans I, would love it. I would. I yeah. would. Like of your own. Like you write something for your of fans. My own, like, yeah, I think that would be would. good. But it would have to be really personal. Really mm -hmm. like every experience that I've gone through, I would have to touch on all of that in those affirmation cards. Mm -hmm. so. and, and but I would. And when is the next album coming? Oh, my God. Wait a minute. Actually, you know what? She um, might be working on something. Oh, I don't actually, know. Yeah, actually, I'm headed to L.A. for a month um, at the end of this week. Oh, she getting ready to sign. When they go to L.A., they oh, get ready to sign. I'm not, a big check. No, I'm still Stomping them down for life. Hold on. Still yeah, independent. exactly. Stomping <laughs> them down for I'm still independent. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I plan to remain independent. Um, when you see me, when y'all see me on Billboard or something like that with, like, a big, huge song, then that's when I'll be negotiating those deals because okay. I'll be peaking, okay. and that's when I want to negotiate those major deals. But, yeah, I'm going to L.A. at the end of this week to um, record another tape. Um, yeah, hmm. it's going to be fire. This idea, this concept for this tape is fire, and we're, I'm going to record it quickly because I want to move on this idea. Okay, who else you want to work with? <laughs> I love Don Tolliver. Oh, I yeah, love, he's dope. I love him. I love Frank Ocean. I love Tyler, the creator. Um, I love SZA. I love Gunna. I like, um, I think that's like my top, like, the artists that I want to work with right now. Because I'm listening to the, I'm like shuffling all of the, their music right now. And I have been for a minute, so. You okay. always did love artists. Gunna, actually. Yeah, I, I remember that yeah. about you. I was going to ask someone, I'm like, you always wear a Gunna thing. <laughs> always. <laughs> Three artists from Houston you might want to work with, but you haven't had the opportunity. Girls. I would say Ken the Man, um, Libra Joe Lee, and Yo. Millie Bucks. Oh, Millie Bucks. I love Millie Bucks. <laughs> I love Millie Bucks. She's so talented. Oh, uh, yes. She's I, so talented. I wish I had a record label and some money. I would sign her. her. <laughs> she's good. She's really good. She's like She has that real raw talent, and I love that she's like still in the thick of it, still grinding, because that's how she's the most passionate right now. I, I just, I love it. But you know what? All the real girls love her. Ken the Man loves <laughs> Millie Bucks. Yeah. You love Millie she Bucks. Next, she next. She next. She's yeah. next. Yeah. She's next. And speaking of, before we let you go, I asked you this before, but everybody knows you're the princess of hip-hop out of Houston right now. <laughs> How does it feel to have that crown? Um, is if that, somebody don't believe me, then let's fight. Well, I was going to say, hold on, is that really what they say? I mean, that's what they be saying. Listen, yeah, whoever mad, just, I didn't say that, so don't I come, said it, y'all can come don't at me. Don't try to come, yeah, come, come, at, for me. come at Jazz, yeah. saying it, but if that is the general consensus, then I'm appreciative. I'm appreciative, I'm grateful, I want to maintain that title, I want to keep giving back to my community, I want to keep showing up for the people that show up for me, so if that's the title, that's what they said, I'll take it. Just well, <laughs> well, thank you so much, we really appreciate you stopping by the yes. show. Thank y'all so much for having me. I really Thank appreciate y'all. Um, these are three people that I really love. They've supported me since the very beginning of my career. Um, so it was only right that I came on the show to show support for them because they've always supported me. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Mona Leo. And I'm clearly cultured. Yeah. I'm clearly cultured. Let's go. <laughs>